This book elevates the voices and the wisdom of women. It brings us, as you've heard from various of the speakers, their very different perspectives on the world. And in the process, it gives us a new compendium of words to live by. Many of us have loved parts of, of Pirkei Avot, then run into some of the quotes that Rabbi Eve shared and thought, what on earth? But meanwhile, we could use new words and words from different places, different people, with different perspectives on the world. So what Pirkei Mahot does, and obviously you've all already started memorizing it page by page, is it builds off this original great Jewish collection of ideas and instructions for how to live our lives. Um, it takes those nuggets of advice that are, in many instances, powerful parts of our history. The good news about all of our ancestors is that they not only wrote down what they thought, they wrote down all of their disagreements with each other. So it gives us some opportunity to winnow through those observations and think about, what does this really say to me? But more importantly, as Eve and Lois recognized, we as women see many of these things differently. And they provide women an opportunity to say so. Sometimes they take well-known teachings and give them a new slant. Even more importantly, they provide a forum for new voices. As you've heard from each of the authors of this book correctly, we each have our own teachers and mentors, and many of those are women. And many of those are women who, for various reasons, gave us words that we value, although they have not always been written down, and they've only very rarely been brought together. Now, I'm going to say a few things about my mother in, in a few minutes, but I want to say, Rabbi Eve, that you know this invitation to remember what your ancestors said can lead you to some very funny thoughts. So when you, when you started tonight like with, what do you remember that your mother or your grandmother said? I have to be honest with all of you, this certainly is not in my prepared remarks. And say that my grandmother used to say all the time, wear clean underwear because you might be in an accident. <laughs> So that obviously rings a bell with many of you, but that's, some of the, that's, that's what you made me remember. That's not, was not exactly for my mood of tonight, but that's what popped into my head. More importantly, Lois and Eve recognized how often in our history, and I'm gonna say particularly in our Jewish history, women have been marginalized, shunted aside, and denied their public voice. These two authors, in their study sessions that produced a book, have brought those marginalized women and their teachings quite literally from the margins to the center of the page. And then most significantly, and Rabbi Stamfer and I are in agreement here, they have invited us in, not just figuratively, but literally, onto the center of our own pages. So when you leaf through the book and you see those blank pages, understand that what these authors intend is to remind us that we are wise ourselves. And they give us not only permission, but actual space, white space on blank pages to share our wisdom and to write ourselves further into the histories of our families our communities, and the world. So this is essentially a book of wisdom for readers and a book of wisdom of readers. It is a true living text. It is our very own Torah. It's an honor to be part of that effort, to have been able to write the foreword, and to be here for the launch of that book.